Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you guys here. You know, I got a good show for you guys this morning. Today is Friday, July 12th, 2019. And let's get a look. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look at what's going on. First, we're going to start with the silver price. $15.10. We're up one penny on the day so far uh, today. Now, uh, it's running in this range, established new range for itself in around $15.15. .15. And you can see it crossing above and crossing below that range today. Let's take a look at gold. Gold price is $14.08, and it's up $5.10 on the day. So gold and silver are looking pretty strong. And this, a lot of this has to do with the Federal Reserve cutting rates. They're going to probably cut 25 basis points, but this is probably only the first of a number of cuts that are coming. Let's take a look at Bitcoin today. See, $11,666.03. And uh, we're basically the same. We haven't really went up or down. Uh, but uh, we are today establishing a, a green candle instead of a red candle for the last couple of days. Bitcoin is in this range right now of around $12,000 or a little bit under. Uh, but we something that we have to keep our eye on with Bitcoin, we have to watch out for. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency market capitalizations right now. And we're looking at uh, $320.7 billion with a 65.2% Bitcoin dominance. And we see all the coins are in the green this morning. Now let's take a look at the Dow and see what it's doing. Uh, refresh the page. We're looking at 95 points up today. The Dow is is starting to establish, uh, it's starting to get solid in around up above twenty seven thousand. It's it's pro if it keeps on like this, it could make new highs very soon. Um, let's move through and let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil today is uh, it's up seven cents on the day, point twelve percent. We're seeing it stay steady now above sixty dollars for sweet light crude. This uh, this should make Russia happy, and it should make OPEC happy. Uh, anyway, still, these prices are not significantly high, considering how high crude oil prices could be, you know, in this climate of what's going on. Let's take a look now at, uh, at the dollar index. We're looking at 97.01 on the U.S. dollar index. And uh, the dollar has been staying strong. I'm amazed how it's able to hold up around 97. Uh, but you got to understand what it's being compared against. The euro makes up the biggest part of what the dollar is compared against. You know, and you know how strong the euro is. <laughs> Need I say more? Let's take a look now at uh, at our bonds. Uh, bonds right now, uh, it's a mixed bag. They were moving up earlier. But you know what I see? I see the bonds, you know, I'm almost expecting a snapback. And what I mean by that is I'm, I'm expecting bond yields on the long end of the, uh, of the curve. that They could snap back and rise rather, rather significantly and rather quickly. Uh, you know, and, and we could actually see this actually happen. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, something else. We went through the markets. Boris Johnson, you know, he's headed for a landslide victory, uh, what they're calling a crushing victory. Uh, Twelve days remaining to vote, but uh, they're saying he's already basically won it, the United Kingdom's prime minister election. Uh, and look, look at the numbers here. Uh, you see 74 percent, Jeremy Hunt 26 <laughs> percent, you know. I mean, uh, it looks like it's pretty much in the bag for him. Now, here's the thing. Talking about a hard Brexit. What they've done is, is they've put it in the mind of all these politicians to fear a hard Brexit like there's nothing else in the world that would be worse. Uh, it's just like, it's like a, they've put a mental barrier there that can't be crossed. It's like... Okay, so now we can't cross that. We'll do anything to try to avoid having this hard Brexit, you know. And uh, it's uh, 
how bad could it be? This hard Brexit. It, it would probably, I'm, I'm thinking it would probably, if they just went ahead and did it, it probably wouldn't really amount to that much. But now that they've put this mental barrier in for these politicians, it's like a line that they can't cross. No, but, oh, oh, hard Brexit. Oh, we can't do that. We can't do that. Nobody asks the question, why? Why can't you? You know? And and they, they don't really have all that many reasons. Well, it would hurt the economy or... Uh, you know, but but they've put this mental barrier in now. Now that this mental barrier is in place, there's an awful lot of peer pressure for politicians to try to avoid this so-called hard Brexit because, oh, the world's going to end if that happens, you know. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if Boris Johnson actually kind of goes along with this peer pressure sort of thing and tries starts trying to avoid this hard Brexit too, you know. When a push comes to shove, because it seems like all of the politicians, no matter who they are, uh, when push comes to shove on this issue, they they start this whole big thing. Well, we can't, we can't do a hard Brexit, you know. I I was just like, why not? Why can't you? Anyway, uh, let's take a look at something else here. You know what? Facebook users, three hundred thousand of them have pledged to storm Area 51. Now, if you guys don't know what Area 51 is, like a lot of my audience maybe don't know what it is, because, but for a while there, in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, and, and for a long time, connected to the UFO phenomenon and, and all these stories about UFOs and stuff, uh, Area 51 became kind of famous as a top secret base where there was rumors that people were... Uh, in Area 51, were, were, uh, there's a lot of rumors surrounded it. Let's just put it that way, this Area 51. So what is Area 51? Let's take a look. We got it on Wikipedia here. Actually, what it is, is a top-secret military base. Uh, it's also known as uh, Groom Lake Facility. And uh, it's, uh, it says that the existence was long kept a secret by the federal government of the United States. Uh, they confirmed the existence of this base in 2000, August of 2013. And what do we really know about this base is that they do a lot of sophisticated aircraft and stuff out there. They, they, uh, they work on specialized things that are top secret. They don't want secrets falling into the hands of the enemy. So they got this secret base out there with big long landing strips and stuff so that they can, they can test these top secret military aircraft like like this thing you know this is a actual picture i guess of a prototype during a, a test at area 51 you know uh so this is what the place actually is but nobody knew of its existence because it's a top secret base i mean top secret you know so there was this fellow that worked there his name was robert lazar you know and and uh what happened was is Back in around 1988, 1989, he came forward and he actually uh, uh, went on the, the news in, in Las Vegas, from what I understand, and he actually exposed this base to the world, you know. He said, there's a base out there, and I worked there, he said, and I did this and I did that. He, he said, he, what he said was, he said he was working on, on, uh, on, on alien spacecraft and stuff like that, at Third Area 51. But he exposed them, you know. So now what we got is, we got the, all of these people here wanting to try to get into this top secret area base, and they're pledging to storm the base. It says that the truth is out there in the Nevada desert, and there are thousands of conspiracy theorists, theorists ready to find it. Nearly 300,000 people have signed up to march on the world-famous Area 51 base, in September, as part of a tongue-in-cheek effort to search the secretive government base for evidence of aliens and unidentified flying objects, you know. So there's an awful lot of debate out there about this subject, and some people say, well, you know, he uh, he uh, he he actually did this, and some people say, no, he didn't do it, you know. And there's an awful lot of that going on. Uh, I got a few questions about it myself. Because how they used to get the people out to this base and nobody knew about this was they used how they would get them in and out of the base, the workers, because it's all top secret out there, you know, and everything. They used to use what's called Janet Airline, this this right here. The only reason we know about this is 
because when the base was exposed, you know, also it was exposed how they get out there and back. It says Janet is in fact uh, the name of a fleet of aircraft which to company E G and G, a service of the United States Department of Defense, uh, used to uh, shuttle people between the McCarran International Airport in Las Vegas and the Nevada test site at Area 51. And so this is what they used to use to this, or even now use to get people back and forth to this base. But nobody knew about it. The people that were on these planes and these Janet flights that would fly out there to Area 51, you know, they were, it was all top secret. They weren't allowed to tell where they were going or, or, or what they were doing or anything like that, you know. Uh, and they would get on these Janet flights and fly out to Area 51. Uh, so anyway. This Robert Lazar guy, when he exposed the base back in around the early 1990s, you know, uh, when he first exposed it, nobody knew it was even out there. When he first exposed it, he told everything about, you know, uh, uh, how they get back and forth out to the base and where the base is and everything else. And he brought it to the world. Well, you know what? If you want to take a look at something about Area 51 here... Uh, this is second here. You'll see that they didn't officially confirm that the base existed. It says the United States federal government confirmed that the base existed on August 2013. Years after Lazar came forward and told about where it was and what it was, you know. Um, the thing is, is, I got one big question about all this. My question is, how did Robert Lazar know about the Area 51 and where it was? If nobody knew where it was, and, and, and how did he know about these Janet flights that take them out to Area 51 to expose it? How did he know all that? You know, that's my simple question. I'm not going to debate over his story about whether or not they're doing alien stuff out there. I'm not even going to touch that. I'm just going to, I just want to know, how did he know? <laughs> How did Robert Lazar know in the first place about all of this and know that this base was even there to expose it back in the 80s or early 90s? Uh, that's what I want to know, you know. So anyway, this is a very curious subject in pop culture, this Robert Lazar and his base out there. And, and you know, this is what brings it to interest is this story right now where the people, uh, 300,000 Facebook users, are pledging to storm Area 51. This is what uh, brings it to interest and why I have it on my show this morning. I found this kind of interesting, the fact that they're going to try to get in there in the first place. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If they actually do try to go out there and get in that base, they're not going to get themselves in nothing but a bunch of trouble, and I don't care if there's 300,000 of them, I don't care if there's 3 million of them. They're not going to be allowed in there. And even if they were allowed in there, they wouldn't get to see much. It'd be a long walk in the hot desert for nothing. Anyway, so it's probably not going to amount to nothing, this whole thing about them pledging that they want to see the aliens. But, I mean, uh, <laughs> there's no aliens in there. Anyway, and if there was something like that, they would have cleared it out long ago. Anyway, uh, so let's take a look now at something else. Moving on to and moving on to one thing and into another thing this morning. And what we're going to take a look at this morning is Tether and Bitcoin. You know what? This could be negative, very negative for Bitcoin. I know Bitcoin's been on a roll. She's on a roll, boys. But you know what? The It says over the past year, cryptocurrency platforms... Bitfinex and Tether have allegedly issued Tethers as loans to investors and, run, and ran an unregistered securities offering and conducted business in New York despite being banned from operating in the state. Uh, it says this all comes from a remarkable memorandum of law filed yesterday by the New York Attorney General's Office, which has been investigating Bitfinex and its sister company Tether since last April. The filing, which includes 28 exhibits comes in response to Bitfinex efforts to dismiss the case and resist the agency's orders and was submitted to the New York Supreme Court. 
So, a memorandum of law was filed yesterday by the New York Attorney General's office. And they've got 28 exhibits. And basically, they're saying that uh, they've issued tethers as loans to investors, allegedly. This is this is part, I guess, of the memorandum of law. And ran an unregistered security offering and conducted business in New York despite being banned from operating in the state. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you, there's no longer arm of the law than the United States government. And, you know, these guys, they might operate in other countries or everything like that. You know what I mean? But I'm going to tell you what. The United States government, I don't care what country you're in. When the United States government starts to close the loop on you, you know, and they start to, they start to, the, to they're, they're drawing the legal framework right now uh, with this memorandum of law that they filed yesterday by the New York Attorney General's office. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, uh, you, you, uh, if you're the person that they're filing these against and stuff, They've probably got a rock solid case. They don't file a memorandum of law in, uh, with the New York Attorney General's office unless they've probably got something rock solid. And it says they've got 28 exhibits. This would be like their evidence, you know? And so it might just be a matter of time now. And, you know, this looms over Bitcoin right now. Because if this whole thing were to just break open like a nasty can of worms. It could take Bitcoin's price down some, I'm sure. It's certainly not going to send Bitcoin up in price. I can tell you that right now, you know. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, you know, like, heck, uh, if this thing were to be bad enough, you know, it could drive Bitcoin back down uh, a lot. Uh, so this is something you got to watch out for. If you're a Bitcoin investor right now, just keep your eye on this and this investigation. Of course, I'm going to be keeping my eye on it and keeping you guys updated. So listen, thank you guys for listening to this morning's show, and we'll catch you guys again. Remember to give me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you guys very soon.